and light itself is not more persistent than the stream of feminine discourse. Edwin Abbott, Flatland. Hello again. Welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. The knight's final case is the strangest of all. The narrator lets us know that unlike all the other cases, this one is not planned by the Duke's minions. Those who were in the know regarding the jokes to be played on Sancho were those most in amazement because this happening and discovery was not orchestrated by them. Helped by her brother, a young girl has escaped her household where her father kept her secluded. She dressed like a man and her brother like a girl so that she could see the outside world. Did you know Moors and Christians is a popular festival celebrated in communities of southeastern Spain. These festivals commemorate the reconquest, during which Christians retook lands occupied by the Mohammedans. The girl is upset, but Sancho dismisses everything as a childish prank and returns the siblings to their father's house. This confusion of genders caused by cross-dressing echoes that of both the ancient Byzantine novel and many of the era's plays. Once again, Cervantes indicates social problems while distracting us with complex narrative details. Careful readers will note three odd aspects to the girl's story. First, why does her brother dress like a girl? Nobody says. Second, as Sancho points out, the girl claims that the force of a certain jealousy has made her break with the decorum that chastity requires, and yet no jealousy appears anywhere in her story. Third, the girl first states that her father is Pedro Perez Mazorca, the tax collector, but then she changes her mind, insisting that her real father is Diego de la Llana, a principal and wealthy Hidalgo. Quixotic Mission According to our interpretation of Chapter 49, what is the likely origin of Cervantes' use of cross-dressing and gender confusion? A. Byzantine Romance B. Golden Age Theater C. Both of these Correct answer, C, both of these. The only explanation she gives of this confusion is that Pedro Perez very often visits the house of my father. But this just begs the question of why she first claimed Perez is her father. Did Yana's wife have an affair? This is all very mysterious and weird. To top things off, Sancho's butler plans on asking the girl's father for her hand in marriage, and Sancho himself thinks the girl's brother would make a good husband for his own daughter, Sanchica. What is going on here? Cervantes is again addressing the expulsion of the Moriscos and the conflict between Christians and Moors. He is also suggesting that love and commerce in textiles represent possible solutions to the problem. Note the Neoplatonic impact that the girl has on Sancho's butler, and note that she exhibits oriental characteristics. The beauty of the maiden had pressed upon the soul of the butler, and once more he brought his lantern close to see her again, and it seemed to him that those were not tears that she was shedding, but seed pearls or the dew of the meadows, and he even raised them a level and compared them to oriental pearls. Her dress is also exotic, her hair tied back in a net of gold and green silk, as beautiful as a thousand pearls, with stockings of scarlet silk, with garters of white taffeta finished with gold and seed pearls. Her breeches were green, made of gold cloth, and her jacket or coat was of the same. This recalls Thoraida. Her brother, too. He wore nothing less than a rich skirt and a shawl of blue damask with fine gold fringe. Finally, the girl's first father's status as a tax collector who frequently visits the home of her second father, who is a rich Hidalgo, recalls the Duke's aversion to Rodriguez's daughter's desire to marry the son of another rich Hidalgo. Taxes depend on trade, and trade requires social relations. In my view, Cervantes is saying that the wealth of Aragon is now very much threatened 
by an inflexible social hierarchy, governmental corruption, and racism. That's all for now. What do you think will happen next? Don't miss it. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.